so much again for joining us today. We are going to be talking about our new Archibus Healthcare package. We have a couple of customers on the line with us and they're going to uh, talk to you guys about how they are using this new package. Um, just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Everyone is on mute, but if you have any questions, please feel free to enter them into the questions or chat section, and we will get to those at the end of the presentation or, or interview. And we are also recording this, and we will send out a link to the recording either later today or tomorrow. So with that, I will turn it over to Fred Krause. Thanks, Danielle, and hi, everyone. I'm Fred Krause. I head up uh, product management for Archivus, and we're here to talk about the Archivus healthcare package. Um, I'm, I'm joined by a few customers I'll introduce in a minute. Uh, so, and the, the format for today is I'll, I'll just introduce the package uh, with, a, with a few slides, and then we'll actually get into a, a conversation with our customers who have been very helpful in uh, participating in our consortium group as we as we took this uh, in through through product development. Um, so with that, I'll just uh, advance the slide and talk a little bit about Archivist Healthcare. And um, re really, there's a couple of audiences uh, for this that we we designed it for. It's it's really for the facility or compliance managers. Um, and, and and they have a lot to balance. They they have to make sure that the facility is uh, properly maintained, um, but they have to do that while also prioritizing patient care. Um, they have to uh, basically balance the maintenance optimization with patient access, and sometimes that can be uh, quite challenging. Uh, they have to make sure the facility complies with state and federal regulations. Um, you know, and if they don't, they they suffer severe fines or uh, other worse consequences. So the Archivist Healthcare package is a complete IWMS that combines elements of space and assets, maintenance and compliance in one place so that the idea is that the facility managers, uh, the compliance managers are armed with a holistic view uh, that they need to meet those challenges and the balances they need to strike. Um, in their organization. Um, having this information available, we believe reduces risk uh, while offering the best patient care. I keep on coming back to patient care uh, because we know that, um, or we've heard from our uh, customers and partners that um, the hospitals, that's how they, that's how they survive really is, is to, to fill the hospital with patients and to provide excellent care. And uh, obviously that hasn't, has proven to be um, critically important, especially in this past year and a half as we've gone through and actually continue to go through uh, the COVID pandemic. So healthcare has always been front and center uh, in our minds and in yours, and of course in the uh, yeah, in the the minds of the whole world, really. Um, I'll dig a little bit deeper into um, what we've heard from uh, facility managers or compliance managers in a little bit more detail. So, on the facility management side, uh, or really the maintenance side, they need to, as I mentioned, schedule critical maintenance while doing best uh, not to interfere with medical activity and patient care. Um, they also have to respond to corrective maintenance quickly in order to keep um, critical assets functioning at peak performance. Um, they do this while uh, their, uh, their hospitals are operating at, at uh, near full capacity, and that puts obviously a strain on the assets they need to take care of. Um, and they also need to respond to any inspection related questions. On the compliance side, and I know sometimes these roles are mixed, um, so we're just breaking it out, but certainly um, these represent other other roles or, uh, in, in, the, in the healthcare organization. On the compliance side, they have to have really reports that they're ready to show compliance, whether it's elevator certificates, room pressure information, asset survey reports, fire barrier inspections, all of these come up and they have to, um, be armed with it so that they can 
uh, prove compliance. And when deficiencies arrive, they have to have a way to quickly raise them, uh, track remediation plans and report on them when they're complete. Um, you know, we all know that Joint Commission, other accreditation boards are serious and we want to make sure that compliance managers are not scrambling at the last minute um, when uh, inspections uh, come around. And for Joint Commission, it's you know, every three years. And we know that that's a very big, um, a very big deal. And we want to make sure that um, our customers are ready uh, to, to comply and not feeling um, uh, really stressed at the last minute uh, scrambling around or at least minimize the scrambling around if, if there is any scrambling. Um, so the healthcare product is, um, is really a, a mix of these, uh, these elements to try to resolve these challenges. Um, it, in, it includes a, a homepage dashboard. I have some pictures I can roll through as, we, as we're talking later, but uh, the dashboard includes metrics and alerts that we, I uh, feel are, are important to keep track of your, the, the facility and uh, shortcuts to key tasks and reports. And the main, um, the main element that we've, uh, we've developed with this package is, is what we've named the facilities console, which is a, um, a, a mix of those, uh, those elements that I've mentioned before, space, assets, um, compliance, maintenance, uh, really there to uh, track and report on healthcare, uh, uh, space and regulatory attributes, and um, ways for the facility and facility floor plans that really respond in many ways to uh, visualize the information that uh, we feel is is most important. And I, there's list some of them here: the healthcare information as it relates to space, uh, maintenance work, uh, maintenance schedules that are pending, um, how that how that relates to um, occupancy and patient and patient rooms, uh, checklists for follow-up actions, uh, compliance requirements and deficiencies and asset locations, and pretty nifty the way um, that we've been able to include uh, firewalls and doors and fire barriers with that um, that are clickable assets that can be uh, called up and, um, and information that can be at your fingertips. Um, all of that is with uh, that makes use of what we've done in Archibus over the last few releases um, that uh, in user-defined fields. So it's easily expend, extended those fields uh, for uh, space and assets uh, and, and also a way to, to extend that even further to match uh, an organization specific needs. So it is um, just a little bit more specifics. The uh, version one healthcare package is built on Argobus 26.1, which is the latest release. And as I mentioned, it includes elements of, um, it includes uh, space maintenance, performance metrics, uh, plus some facility, uh, healthcare facility functionality in the facilities console. So that's the package, that's what is included in the package. And compliance is an optional uh, add-on as well. And it's also going to be compatible. We are releasing 26.2 fairly soon, and the healthcare package will be compatible with that release as well. So that's a brief um, overview of, of, of what we've done. And now I'm happy to introduce our panelists. Um, in, uh, I'll start with Sarah Gardescu. She's a facility information manager at an academic medical center. Sarah, you want to just say hi? Hello, everybody. I'm glad to be here, and it was it's been good to to work on this development and see where things are going. Thanks, Sarah. We also have uh, Sherry Lester, uh, project manager uh, for business operations at University of Missouri Healthcare, and also at University of Missouri Healthcare, Andrew Lang, a healthcare data analyst. Um, Sherry and Andrew, you want to say hi? Hello. Good morning. Okay, with that, um, what I'll do is start with some questions and, and uh, uh, conversation with, with our three participants. So uh, my first question is, is uh, simply, how are you currently using Archibus? So just, to, just as background. So Sarah, you wanna um, get us started with, with that? 
Sure. Um, so uh, I'm working in an academic medical center. We have uh, four hospitals, about 900 beds, um, buildings, lots of buildings. Um, so mostly we are using Archibus for space. We came out of this on the kind of the academic side where we need a lot of uh, space reporting for state and federal purposes. But that's let us leverage that space data, floor plans, um, to extend into managing our housekeeping contracts where we have different levels of service across all our buildings. And also um, to add pressure dependent rooms, which is I think one of the nice features of this, um, where we everybody can have access to um, which rooms are positive and which rooms are negative, and that helps for uh, you know the Joint Commission and, and sort of the compliance end of it, as well as planning purposes where other people need to know what's the best use for the room. Thanks, Sarah. Um, Sherry and Andrew, do you want to um, talk about how you're using Archibus? Okay, I'll give you a general overview and then I'll let Andrew get into some more specifics. Um, we also are an academic medical center. Uh, as well as a level one trauma center. Um, we have four hospitals, uh, so we have various campuses as well as over 70 offsite facilities that we maintain. The um, Archibus, that when we first started with Archibus, we mainly focused on space and the building ops console, and we've expanded out to the uh, mobile as well as move management and projects, and we're just now upgrading to the compliance. Um, we do use the system to its full advantage and try to leverage every bit of strength we can from it. Uh, we have over 19,000 assets documented and we're still going over 8,700 parts that we use uh, for identifying what we use for our PM so we can be proactively in our procurement as well as um, keeping track of what we need to reorder and the costs that are associated with the operations and maintenance of our buildings. Um, we also use it for a lot of the reporting, life safety. Um, we have outage requests that we use the drawings to track and see what areas are going to be impacted. Our regulatory relies on us for the different reports that we have to provide. We uh, use DNB rather than Joint Commission and DNB comes yearly to our facilities and uh, our security uh, finds the benefit of having our drawings available and we've created a specific access for them. Andrew deals more with our day-to-day -day operations and our tradespeople. He can expand on the mobile and our workflow. It has been a great benefit to us to be able to get work out and direct to our trade team specific eight HVAC, electrical, plumbing in a very timely manner, whereas before on our previous platform that we used, uh, it was a paper-based type of document that we would get a request in, put it in a box, it eventually would make its way out to a crass person, uh, get the information back, and we'd have to enter it back in. This is pretty much a instantaneous type of method that we can get the work to the right teams and to the right people to get it taken care of in a very timely manner, especially if we have a life safety patient emergency type of situation that needs to be responded to as soon as possible. That will also allow us to track those type of requests that come in. So when we get called upon with DNV to make sure that we're in compliance on all type of situations, we can pull up and be able to supply that information as quickly as possible, uh, being able to identify uh, and then put into motion preventive maintenance work requests for our equipment so that we're getting to that in a timely manner and that we can report on it to senior leadership. We're Great. also working in we're also working in bed tracking uh, with our IT partners with Cerner so we can know where a bed is located at to be able to get it picked up because trying to locate one of our 4,000 potential beds that we might have out there can be a very insurmountable task. So we're trying to get that into the system where we can track those down very promptly to get them in for necessary or needed repairs. I'm flipping through some slides to say, as, as you mentioned, some of the um, 
some of the items that um, we've we've put into the healthcare package. Thank you, thank you, um, three of you for for talking about how you're using Arquebus. So specifically, though, so we I, I mentioned that um, we'll go back to the panelist page. I, I mentioned that uh, that that you three have been instrumental in as part of our customer consortium as we've gone through the product uh, product development and uh, really all phases so requirements gathering and and then uh, getting it into develop, development and having you um, uh, take a look at it either, both both first through presentations and then having access to a beta instance of healthcare so um, with that in mind, um, what aspects of the healthcare beta that you um, that you you know played around with did you particularly find useful and valuable? Does anybody want to to start? I specifically like the ability to have just one focused area that you can go to to be able to drill down on specific information, uh, such as calling out the rooms which are ligature risk pressurized, where we would have to usually go to go back to the space console portion to be able to pull up some of the specific data on those rooms. Uh, it has a kind of a one-stop shopping type of area there where you can call up and pull up the information for uh, asset management, for room management. Uh, and then to get into some of those more specifics on ligature risk rooms, ice, uh, pressurized type of rooms where it, it was a little clunky before where you may have to go to two or three different spots to try to call up that information. It's kind of like a single area where you can just go to now, which I found extremely helpful. I, I'd like to comment as well, the change to the home page and getting to the things you need is very intuitive and user friendly. So I don't think there will be a large amount of time spent on training once you get comfortable with everything. And then you can have the dashboard giving you a quick overview of the specific reports that are important to you or your C-suite uh, to justify your existence, which anymore you have to be able to do. Data is king and Archivist is wonderful at capturing that. Yeah, the, the new search function on the tree is outstanding. I've, I've had very good feedback and uh, luck with that on calling up specifically where I need to go to. Great. Thank you. Um, Sarah, anything you wanted to add? Uh, boy, you guys covered a lot of it. <laughs> um, I, I think, you know, I think for us, uh, definitely the, the console interfaces with kind of everything at your fingertips. So you're flipping through you know, while looking at the floor plan, I can say, hey, is this a pressure dependent room? And at the same time, maybe find out, um, you know, is it a is it a particular kind of OR? Um, and so ha having that uh, all in one, you know, it's a little overwhelming when you first get into it, but as you get used to it, uh, being able to, to search and filter and find, um, as mundane as it seems, we spend a lot of time looking for uh, rooms that we've vacated and are still paying to clean. Right. So, um, and we kind of started along this it, it, uh, as a follow-on question. Um, how do you think the new features will help in your day-to-day -day responsibilities and or your long-term goals? Sarah, do you want to start us off on that one? Um, yeah, I think, I mean, we we take a, or have been stuck with a fairly measured uh, approach to improving Archibus. So we've taken some real small things and tried to layer them in and see if they work and then hope to, to build more on those. And so looking at this beta, um, you know, we were most intrigued. We, we definitely look at things where floor plans are most useful. We do use a different package for our maintenance. So that's not really seen as an opportunity, but if I can put uh, fire doors on a floor plan, then um, the PDF that my guy keeps sending me to print out for him goes away, and maybe I can give him, get him to use mobile and go out and do his inspections that way rather than however they're using this piece of paper. So, um, you know, we looked at, at those things and, and kind of went, wow, we need to chase this in more detail. Um, we have other uh, requests and actually, interestingly enough, because of the beta, some requests that we could have probably taken care of already, but 
um, it's good to get people interested in what they see and, and get some ideas going. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, Sherry or Andrew, anything to add on um, how it will help you? We really like the look of the dashboard where it calls out some of the alerts and metrics. Uh, the format of that looks very appealing, especially to some of our higher ups that want to have a really quick snapshot of what's going on in the facility currently, uh, what are uh, primary indicators of things that are deficient, uh, things that we're uh, out of compliance on as far as this time frame is concerned. It's a very good quick snapshot uh, of a reporting type of basis that they can kind of look at on a very quick basis to get up to speed or up to date without having to dive in so much into all the specifics or details, which we sometimes have to do. All right. So, um, Moving on, I think I, I and, and this may be a follow on, but um, I'll start with uh, Sherry. Um, what, what sort of problems uh, keep you up at night and what have you seen from Archibus that you think will help you help you sleep better? Oh gosh, you, you must have seen me not sleeping at night. Uh, <laughs> one of our, our challenges, is, and I'm sure everybody has this, um, with the way things go in society, we always have to prove ourselves and be able to support whatever requests we make. Um, before we had Archibus, it was really hard to say we need to do this because, and then we couldn't support it. With Archibus, it has eased up the thought process in that we can generate the reports we need. Our dietary, we maintain all of the equipment in our kitchens. And we had some ovens that were not working properly, and we were putting a lot out in maintenance to keep these things running. At that point, the director for dietary came to us. We generated the reports showing how much we were spending on maintaining and keeping these things operational, as well as how much time it was taking. And he was able to go to our uh, executive committee and present the documentation justify the need and able to secure three new ovens, which has reduced our amount of time maintaining things and allowed us to go into other areas for maintenance or PMing and on-demand calls. The other thing is, like a lot of us, we run 24-7. Knowing that we have archivists out there to convey the information of what's been done during the day so the night shift is able to have a reference and then equally when the day shift comes on they're able to go in and see what the night shift has done to maintain or maybe alleviate a problem that was going on that they couldn't take care of until a specialty trade got in it's been very good in communicating that and we don't worry about it and our um, admins that are on call have noticed a reduction in the calls that they get in the middle of the night Excellent. Great, great examples. Thank you. Um, anybody else want to add to that? Uh, maybe from a from that was a, on a, from a maintenance perspective, also from a space perspective. Any uh, anything about any problems that keep you up that you that um, you rely on Archibus to to help you with? I'm I'm having trouble thinking of a a. a a real good example off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. we do. I, we have we our our planning, design, and construction team really are the ones that are the forefront on the uh, space portion uh, that deal with the maps and the drawings. They pull all their data information from campus to get all the drawings up into our system. Fred, I think one thing about space is yes, it's a very important and integral part. Um, I do know that with our space, we are much more accurate in reporting our finances and our patient care space to CMS for our reimbursements. Uh, we're able to track that better. And anytime the rooms change, we have a real time report showing those changes. We bring on a lot of offsite properties as well. So it, it allows us to know that if our guys pull up a drawing, they're gonna be able to find the space that they need even if they're not familiar with that particular building or um, floor. 
you know, to build onto what Sherry was saying, then we can then call up all the assets that we have tied into that particular space. So if there's going to be a move that's going to be made from right. one location to another, we can take a snapshot of everything that we have currently in that space. When it gets transferred over through the system to the new room numbers, the new space, we can then move those assets over seamlessly to uh, make sure that we don't lose anything out there. We can call up still all the historical right. data, all the historical information that we have tied to those assets. I think one thing about space is it's an integral part of maintaining a facility. We all have it. And I think because it's being maintained very well by our team, it's one of those things we don't even think about because we know it's there. So to specifically give you an example, it would be more difficult for us. Um, I, I do have one uh, one thing comes to mind after listening to, to Andrew and Sherry is um, because, you know, I've talked about we, we have kind of the space side and we have other software for, for operations and property services. And so uh, because of some of the things, the few things that we've been able to add to Arcbus, we actually have more of the operations people using it uh, for locations, for uh, room uh, names and for the pressure dependent rooms and we're actually getting kicked back from their annual inspections um hey you know this room you guys think that this is a, a an operating room but they've actually got all the um you know a bunch of equipment stored in there because they don't have the volume on that campus that they used to and so we're able to take that from a planning perspective and a and a and a real reality check um and update the data and you know, signage, signage requests, and whatever modifications right. they need to make to the room pressures, and have it all cleaned up before somebody comes and finds it later. So I think that the really coordination between the coordination between the two groups, the talking to each right. other part, leveraged from actually looking at the same data in the same software. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's a good. Yeah, I'd have example. to agree with you, Sarah. Great uh, a lot of time we have people that presume, well, this this space is in my clinic or whatever, and I can do whatever I want with the room. Well, unfortunately, a negative pressure room is not a storage room for supplies. And um, and, and, and my spreadsheet says this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yep. It's like no, it's not. This is this is dated the, 2016. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, we like we like to keep things current and uh, cleaned up. Keep it clean. It's a, yeah, thank you. It's great, great, uh, great examples and and uh, good conversation around it. Um, I had another question on um, on compliance. Um, you know, this 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 slide actually mentions Joint Commission Sarah, right? It was Sarah that mentions you use DNV, the annual inspection. Is that correct? No, that's um, Sherry. Sherry. Oh, Sherry. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. That's that's us. Um, that's us. <laughs> yeah. So, so do you want to talk a little bit about about DNV and and how you're using Archivus to uh, to get the information that you need in order to uh, in order to, you know in order to handle that 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 annual inspection? Yes. Um, we're probably no different than a lot of other facilities. Uh, you have older buildings that are tied to newer buildings or uh, the building codes have changed over the years. So when we added a tower, we physically lost a floor in that because of the higher ceiling requirements. And uh, when Joint Commission comes in, they pretty much open the door up to look at anything and everything and transitioning from one building to another, we found a deficiency with some of our uh, firewalls the penetrations had been compromised. And having our archivist set up, we were able to go floor by floor, identify the areas that needed addressed, and then be able to provide a report to DNV that we had addressed all of those deficiencies and we were now compliant with their request. With them coming on a yearly basis, I assure you they will keep in mind what they got you for last year and they will come back to it. So we find that Archibus is very good at supporting the issues that we've had to address. Thanks, and Sherry. Being able to call up, and being able to call up that data pretty much immediately when they mm -hmm. need it. And, and Sarah, you, you, your your facility still uses uh, or still uh, uses Joint Commission, right? 
Correct, yes. Right. And is anything that you um, want to add from a from a compliance perspective that you've relied on Archibus to help address? I think the, the biggest place that it's helped us is in sort of the currency of the data and the speed of being able to answer questions because, um, you know, Joint Commission, you have a window of opportunity and they arrive, um, usually uh, we find out about seven o'clock in the morning, um, at least in my position. <laughs> And so, um, you know, everybody goes into kind of standby mode and then uh, the the curious calls come in and you're trying to figure out where somebody's standing and what, what room sign they're looking at to go chase the data that they're trying to find. Um, so I think, again, with the kind of consistency of interface, the being able to have the real time um, plans available with, you know, yes, this is the room number, this is the room use. Um, has just helped in in that end of things. We we are not yet. Um, again, we have other systems in play, so uh, other people are chasing other kinds of data. I'm sure. All right. All right. I, I might add to that on the uh, the ability to provide the information in a very timely manner. When we sit down to go through the reviews and they want to question us about, well, what about this? Uh, PM or what about did you do this? We can immediately pull up the work ticket based on that location in that area and provide that documentation without going through and digging through piles of paper, files, or binders. And once you do that, you open yourself up to all the other areas that they could look at. Being able to pinpoint one area alleviates that stress. Interesting. Being able to call up those craftsperson's notes and see specifically what they did to complete the task. Right. Well, this is great. Um, I, I want to give some time for the uh, attendees to ask questions. But before I do, uh, a couple things. Uh, any 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 additional thoughts or anything that um, I didn't ask uh, that that you wanted to uh, that you wanted to mention to to the group today? I think the biggest thing is the consortium that you put together and getting the feedback from all the participants addressed a lot of issues that we were all feeling the pains of. And as you know, you can modify things, you can customize things, but you have started to pinpoint and direct those resources to address the problems that are specific to healthcare. Um, everybody has their challenges. Unfortunately, we fall under a very, very close magnifying glass that likes to pinpoint any fault that they can find. So it has helped us immensely in being able to track and address our issues. Thanks, Sherry. Uh, I've, I'll build on that a little bit, just saying that uh, one of the things that I, I've enjoyed in my years of um, Archivus and Space IQ is, is actually not just, I mean, not just uh, the product, which I'm in day to day, but uh, the, the um, the community of, of of partners and customers really that uh, help us all um, uh, understand uh, best practices and and especially in a changing world. So um, bringing together this consortium for this purpose is another example of of you know uh, sharing information, sharing best practices, and that helps us all uh, become better at our jobs. And I that's one of the things that I really um, have come to appreciate about um, you know the, uh, the the not just the company but the community that um, that that really helps us all and helps and helps us with the product so it's a, a, I think it's a win-win all around and I do want to um, send a, a special shout out to um, our, my colleague Octavian uh, Vlad who's also on the line who has been really spearheading this um, uh, this effort and uh and and leading the consortium so while i'm i'm doing the um I, i'm just doing the 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 emceeing for today uh he, he he's been really working very uh uh day to day on on this project so thanks octavian for your efforts um i also wanted to just i've been flipping through these slides um but I wanted to just make sure, I think we've, we've touched upon a lot of these. We've touched upon the room pressure, of course, and the home pages. 
and fire zones, which is another view of um, if you had that on floor plans as as zones that they can be shown here as well as for context. We've talked about the fire doors and wall wall markers and fire barriers, and um, I mentioned at the beginning how they can be called up uh, as assets, uh, logged and called up as assets, which I think is um, one thing that we've we've pressed upon um in our development especially with um not just with our customers but with our partners guiding us as to what what, what they felt was very important to um to our customers to show and to manage and i mentioned this at the beginning the the balancing access with maintenance and this is a, a view a little bit of a eye chart when you first look at it but it's it's leveraging our you know the ability to highlight border highlight by different contexts so that you see you know for this example it's um accessible rooms and work pending so if you 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 know you need to be able to balance those because if there's work pending you want to make sure the room is free and um one of the things that's been on our plate is is um even in deployment is uh with using our archibus connectors can we connect into a room you know a room status um a system to be able to uh, quickly get into those vacancies and occupancies and uh, and and see which rooms are affected by maintenance. And we also mentioned preventive maintenance and certainly uh, compliance as well. This is um, NFPA occupancy types uh, highlights. So I think that, and I, I mentioned that there was a bed count. So I wanted to just make sure we ran through the um, the 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 these visuals then and the use cases that they uh that they address um any other uh i think any other parting thoughts from the um from the participants before we open up to questions i did really right. quickly fred just want to mention that um you know we did have help in building out this archivist healthcare package from two of our partners, JLL Technologies and Building Eyes. I just wanted to give them a quick shout out as well. Thank you, Daniel. Good, good point. <laughs> um, we do have a, a few questions that have come through. So again, if you do have any questions, feel free to enter them into the questions or chat section. Um, the first question, I'm not really sure, Fred, you might be able to answer this one. Uh, I know that Sarah, Sherry, and Andrew are all based here in the US, but there was a question if anyone can comment on the regulatory and compliance issues of global or eurozone, Fred, I'm not sure if you ran into any of that in in building this out. Um, I haven't specifically. I'm wondering if Octavian, if he's on the line, if he could um, address that. Hi everyone. So when we build the um, healthcare package, um, while we focus on the U.S. Uh, market, we try to make the make the um, the terms, the field names, and highlights as generic as possible, so that they, we are not bound to a specific U.S. Uh, regulatory compliance situation. Um, and the system is pretty flexible. If you also ch choose to go with the compliance module. I think you'll find out that it can uh, it can uh, support not only U.S.-based uh, compliance requirements but also other um, countries. Uh. Yeah. Uh, adding to that actually is is the um, not the in, in addition to compliance. What we've we've done in previous uh, in in the previous couple of releases, if you're not familiar, is is the uh, bringing in that that questionnaire framework into maintenance operations. So um, the we have a we have a questionnaire framework that allows users to uh, really admins to build out questionnaires and checklists, and you can then attach them to maintenance workflows such that so that's a more uh, again a generic way to say well if we have a, a checklist that's specific to a, um, a compliance body we can we can write that checklist and then attach it to a maintenance workflow so that if, uh, for example, maintenance staff are doing PMs, they are responding to those uh, those those questionnaires and in, in so doing, um, you know, uh, complying with uh, any regulatory um, uh, bodies uh, issues. Great. 
Great, thank um, you. Yeah, sure. Okay, so the next question is, what are the KPIs for healthcare facilities management and space management, and how would Archibus assist in meeting those? So any KPIs for, for facilities management and space management? Any of our participants wanna weigh in on that? We had worked with our business partner on setting up some very specific KPIs to our own facility here to be able to use as a metric or a score, uh, but that's just something that we work closely with uh, with our partners with Newmark. Great, thank you, Andrew. I'll add, um, I mean, we did talk about facility KPIs. I mean, the one, one thing that I think was uh, that I've heard from the from our participants today and throughout this process is the importance of capturing the um, the uh, the pressure, the pressure room. So the, uh, this uh, I'm not sure if it translates into a KPI, but show me, you know, show me the rooms that are pressurized versus uh, negatively and positively. And of course, this can bring into, as you see on the left hand side, you could actually get a report out of it. Uh, the list of rooms, their areas, uh, their types and categories that are um, that are positive versus negative versus neutral. Great, thank you. Uh, okay, the next question that I see here, um, this is to to Sherry and Andrew and Sarah. Do any of you use space information to calculate annual Medicare reimbursement? Yes, we work very closely with our finance department and uh, we specifically pull up all the different areas that are direct patient care. We get the square footage and the use of the spaces and we that's how we keep our reports. And we found since we've implemented Archivist, we get much more timely information and more accurate information. Uh, finance is very happy with it. Uh, yeah, and I can say um, we provide uh, space data to our um, team that works on the, the reimbursement side, um, and, and some of our reports are designed around their needs, and then if there are specific issues, we follow up, um, you know, with, with specific questions. So we it the space reporting, the space data does support that process. Great. Thank you so much. Um, okay, next question. Do you think the transition from your existing Archivist environment to this new package will be easy from what you have seen so far? Yeah, definitely, uh, from our perspective, it, uh, like I said, it's a very intuitive system that Octavian and the group have worked on. And the transition we find it feeds over because they've kept the main databases consistent. So that data just flows over seamlessly. And whenever we've done any kind of changes, we've made sure that it's going to be something that will flow over without any customization. Perfect, thank you. Sherry, Sarah, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, well, I, I'm I'm in a little bit of a difficult situation on that one because my upgrade is next week. Uh -huh. um, so uh, we we got uh, involved in this beta when um, we thought we were upgrading earlier this year, and we're kind of wistfully looking at it and thinking, well, we're not going to make it to 26.1. So this is all kind of for our planning down the road. And then um, we hit a couple of speed bumps, but at the same time, we will now be deploying 26.1 shortly and um, I we're I think uh, unfortunately been tied up with that and subsequent to that we'll be looking specifically at how uh, this package will help us and um, what we can do to get that in place but I, I think from where we are it, it does reinforce for me the need to keep up to date and now that Archibus is doing quarterly updates uh, we're looking at how to shift from the more traditional view of, hey, we can, we have to upgrade every two or three years to, 
hey, what if we actually kept up to date? Great, thank you both. Um, so we have some, some more questions coming through here. This one, uh, they say it's kind of a curveball, but are your CFOs enthusiastic about Archivist? And if so, why? I'll, I'll start by saying I don't think my CFO knows much about Archibus. And even when they asked for dashboards, we pretty much determined that their need to actually log into another system kind of um, stopped that. So uh, we see it more as being able to provide timely responses with high quality data. Um, I will say that our CFO has stopped questioning our annual space reports because they've seen kind of consistent reporting and um, backup data for four or five years and, and to sort of go, okay, we know what you do and you do it. Um, to add to that, one caveat to our situation is we're in between CFOs, so we have an interim. Uh, but as far as, like Sarah said, I'm not really sure that they're that in tune with it. We pull data out of Archibus and generate reports. So as we like to say, we basically spoon feed that information to them because they also don't want to take the time out to log into Archibus and see that. But the data we can provide is very substantial and it's gotten its credibility to where, as Sarah said, they don't really question too much and they're very pleased with what they're seeing. Perfect, thank you both. Um, okay, this is a follow-up to the Medicare finance question. Are there challenges in aligning internal department codes with services that Medicare reimburses for? Uh, I can toss two cents into that, which is I believe there are from time to time. Um, we've had some uh, the the one issue that I can uh, recall, we had one department that had managed to get all their space, uh, radiology department, all their space under one department code. And uh, the, the CMS reimbursement group came back and said, guys, we can't get this to line up. Um, and you aren't putting your assets in the right places. So um, we had a effort one year to kind of parse that out into some individual uh, service lines and get their significant assets. Like when the MRI is showing up as being in the wrong room, it doesn't really line up very well. So there was some effort to, to do that. But I think now that we've gotten it cleaned up, I haven't heard anything else in the last couple of years. I know from working with our finance department, um, we have general finance centers for the different uh, divisions and lines of service um, that are offered. But under that, we have a what we call a MO code, which is a smaller granular drill down of the space. So things that line up with the CMS, they're specifically assigned those type of codes and it makes it much easier for them to drill down to that. So I'm not aware of any problem unless we have a construction project or remodel that would change the use of the space at which time we have to update that information. Great, makes sense. All right, I think that is it for the questions. Let me just make sure, do one more double check here. Yep, I think that is that is all we have for today. So. Thank okay. you, Sarah, Sherry, and Andrew for joining us today. And thank you, Fred and Octavian as well. And thank you to everyone that um, that jumped on to, to listen more about the Archivist Healthcare Package. We really appreciate it. And if you have any questions that you uh, didn't get answered today or have a question that pops up, feel free to reach out to us directly or to your, your uh, business partner. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Danielle. No problem. I hope everyone has a great day. Yes, have a have a great day and, and thanks for your attention.